Gentlemen, here in the first week of summer, I thought we'd return to the world of hats with what is historically the ultimate summer hat, the boater, here on Big Pretty Man. Hi, and welcome back to Big Pretty Man, a channel for the extra-large man who, won't, who wants to live his life large and in charge. I'm your host, Timothy Big Pretty Crow, I'm a wardrobe and lifestyle consultant for the extra-large man. Okay, guys, you know, I was looking at my videos the other day, and I figured out that I haven't done a hat video since February of 2021, well over a year ago. And that just couldn't stand. <laughs> so I thought I'd take advantage of this first week of summer to talk about what has been historically the ultimate summer hat. And, of course, I'm talking about the straw boulder. Now, the boulder hat, the boulder hat at one time was a very dominant hat in Western culture. Uh, if you went back a uh, hundred years ago in the summer, you would have looked out over a crowd and seen just a sea of boulder hats. But of course, it's fell into abeyance over the last over the over the last like seventy years. But you know, it still exists in a few uh, a few pockets uh, of society um, and, a, and a few for a few events, but. It is. I want to show in this video that it's still a very practical hat, especially in the summertime when you really want to show some style and some formality, but you want to stay, want your head to stay cool. Okay, so let's talk about ex first exactly what a boater hat is. Well, a boater hat is obviously a straw hat. It is actually made of what's known as sennit straw, which is a very th thick and, and stiff straw that is braided at an angle to give it this spiral. Um, this this type of spiral and um, it has a um, obviously a wide brim a very wide brim flat brim and it has this this mostly elliptical uh, crown uh, the straight down what's often called a telescopic a telescope crown um, and is usually has a a, gro a, a grogain um, uh, ribbon usually of black or an often of, of, of blue uh, blue and red or, or other colors. Now, um, this, this, particular, this particular hat was actually, it looks like that it was a fashion after uh, a sailor's hat, probably the, probably the tar sailors, uh, the, the, the Brit tar sailors of, of the 1700s. And it was f really invented and mass produced first at, in Loughton uh, in Bedfordshire, England. Um, which had been producing straw hats for, since the 1700s. This particular hat actually started off, it was very popular with children in the early 19th century. And women started wearing it by the, around the, eight, by the 1860s. It wasn't picked up by men as a fashion statement until about the 1880s. And after that, the, the boater hat just became the hat of the summer. Um, you you see it a lot in you know in a, a lot of the cl uh, the impressionist artists, uh, you, you know um, so, and you know and this was very much a recreational hat. This type of hat you wore to the beach, you wore you wore uh, especially doing things like um, boating, which is where it gets one of its names, um, because you know and, and being it's a straw hat, it's extremely cool. So so it's also been called a skimmer. And, uh, and um, it's also been call, called a, um, a, a senate after the, after the straw. Um, so, or even sometimes called a basher. And the reason they call it a basher, we'll be talking about in a little while. Um, but, you know, the hat, you know, became, was very popular. You see, you know, like I said, if you look at old pictures, from, especially around the, the 1920s, you'll see just a sea of them. It was a very popular hat in the 20s and actually kind of, um, was kind of a signature of that era. Uh, also, it was very popular with, with uh, celebrities uh, and with presidents. We have several presidents we have pictured, like uh, um, Calvin Coolidge, Warren Harding, um, you know, and um, Taft wearing the Boulder hat. So, um, and as well as well as with a lot, a lot of entertainers, uh, Buster Keaton being one um, that you see wearing wearing the the Boulder hat. Um, so the boulder, so the so the boulder hat was a very well established hat. Now the boulder hat is one that you still see around for certain occasions, as I was saying. 
Um, you know, it's not worn. It's not a, uh, a regularly worn hat uh, that you see out and about most of the time. Uh, but you know, it it is become a hat that's associated with a couple of events. Uh, for one, it is associated like with politics, uh, mostly because of campaigns during the summer. These type of hats have become a tradition. Uh, so a lot of campaigns you'll see um, often usually foam or plastic versions of the hat being worn at you know as a novelty um, at at elections usually with the with the you know vote for whomever pins on them or even even decorated up very fancy. Um, another th thing that it was associated with was vaudeville. Uh, you know, kind of the, the song and dance man wore a boater hat, usually with a cane, uh, you know, and did his act. And that's still kind of uh, been, been um, there's still a remnant of that in uh, barbershop quartets, which this has become the classic hat of a barbershop quartet, singing song, you know, the songs from the Great American Songbook. Um, now, there's also a lot of collegiate uh, traditions with this hat, um, even with my own alma mater. Um, for what, uh, and usually surrounding what, what was used to be known as Straw Hat Day, um, which is very interesting because, as I talked about before in um, one of my earlier videos talking about summer hats, where you know you switch off hat, you know, your felt hats from the, from the fall and winter to straw hats, you know, in, in the, um, in, you know, in the spring and summer, then um, that was actually an official thing <laughs> back in the day. Because back in the times when men, it was considered a bit of a um, fashion faux pas for a man to go out without a hat on his head, uh, the, these, f these uh, fashion rules really did apply. And there was what was known as Straw Hat Day, the day that you took off your felt hats from the winter, your, your bowlers, your homburgs, your, your fedoras, and you put on the straw hat, usually being the bowler hat. And though the day differed from region to region and city to city, um, it was usually somewhere between mid-May and mid-June. Uh, here in Philadelphia, it was uh, the a Straw Hat Day was officially May 15th. And what's interesting, even though, you know, people don't wear those straw hats, you know, every man's not wearing a straw hat, so there is no straw hat day. At the University of Pennsylvania, on the last day of classes, uh, which is usually in the second week of May, they have what's known as Hay Day. Um, probably referring to the straw. <laughs> By which the juniors that are now turned to seniors uh, have a, uh, a huge parade march through campus and they wear um, boater hats and they carry a mahogany cane. Um, I participated in that myself back when I when I went from junior to senior. And you know, it's, a lot, it's a lot of college, call it, it's, a, it's a tradition that runs back to at least the beginning of, of the 20th century, around 1913, you know, it's still going on today. And you see this also, like with uh, uh, Pr like with Princeton, their band wear a a uh, um, a, bo a boater hat wearing their colors. You know, go pin, go pin. <laughs> always going to always going to support my alma mater. Uh, so there's where it's showing where this tradition is still kind of carried on. Um, and also, when it came came time for the the hats to come off and the winter hats to come on go back to they had felt hat day which was usually in September it actually became universally uh, accepted to be September 15th when you took off your summer hats and put on your felt hats so the rules I was talking about before or the advice I gave about hey you know in certain summer months put on the straw hats or you know or at least some cooler hats and put the felt felt hats and thicker winter hats away actually was a rule in the day back in the day uh, back when dressing really mattered and was really important socially but uh, so but you know what what makes it interesting is because of this tradition there actually was a, a couple of riots that was brought on by the, str the straw boater. Yeah. Um, what had happened was, is they become a tradition on Wall Street that on their straw hat day, which I think fell on May 12th, uh, that the men from Wall Street would come to work wearing their straw hats, um, their boater hats, and toward the end of the day or middle of the day, they would 
take that hat off, put their felt hat on, and crush the, uh, the, the boulder hat. Because usually, if you're wearing a straw hat every day out in the sun, it's going to start to unravel through it, and, and the, the band's going to start to fade. So it's usually pretty worn out, just like the hats I talked about before. My straw hats that get worn out, you know, those Toyo hats, and I, I toss them out. Um, I said I use my uh, straw hat as uh, the kindling for my first winter fire. <laughs> so this is sort of the same thing. They would take these hats off, stomp, stomp them, and put on their felt hats. So what had happened was it became a fashion thing, or a little bit of a cultural thing, that uh, on, uh, on felt hat day, if someone saw you out, especially young boys, as they said in the papers, hoodlums, <laughs> roustabouts, uh, uh, they saw you with one of the, wearing a boulder hat, they'd walk by, pick it off your head, and throw it on the ground and stomp on it. This was usually taken with, uh, with, with uh, uh, a good spirit, but not always. And in fact, in 1922, 100 years ago this year, um, there, there, the, on uh, felt hat day, it turned out to be a fairly abnormally warm day. So people weren't wanting to put on the felt hat, so they was all wearing their boulder hats. So um, everybody was out wearing boulder hats. So a bunch of young men, they said once again young hoodlums, were running around jerking the hats off people's head, knocking them off the head, stomping on them, and even grabbing them and building fires and burning them. Um, they finally did this to some dock workers near the Brooklyn Bridge, and <laughs> they, those, those rough guys didn't take it, and they started a brawl that actually blocked the bridge, and police had to be sent in. In fact, there were over a thousand men running, uh, hoodlums, as they said, running around the city, knocking hats off people's head, setting them on fire, stomping on them. Fights were breaking out. Um, a lot of people were injured. A lot of people were arrested. Um, one judge was so upset, he actually said that uh, to knock a hat off a man's head was actually assault, and people were going to go to jail if they didn't stop. And this lasted for eight days. An eight-day riot over straw hats. Um, wh why this happened has been speculated. Some people say it may have been a, um, a class thing, the lower classes seeing these upper class men wearing these hats and they were knocking them off. However, one researcher has noted that the areas where these hoodlums were striking worse just happened to be on the same block or within a block of a hat store where men could go in, because once again, you didn't walk around bareheaded, that was considered a faux pas, where men could walk in and buy their new winter felt hats. So, may have been these boys are getting a little bit of money under the table to run around and do this. We don't know. But <laughs> this is one fashion statement, this is one hat that actually caused a riot, several riots in big cities in America. <laughs> I kinda love that. <laughs> I think today if you wear it, you'll be pretty safe. Now, let's talk about when and if you could wear this hat. Well, of course, first you do have to, we do have to recognize that the boulder hat has really fell out of it of a regular fashion. It's not something, something you would regularly see walking on the streets. It is, a, it is now considered a vintage hat. Um, so, therefore, to wear it may take a little bit of bravery, and it probably is going to get some looks. Even more than, you know, I think you can get away with wearing a, a Homburg. It's still an acceptable hat. It's just a big, nice dress hat. If you're all dressed up and you're wearing a, a Homburg, most people are going to say, hey, nice hat. You know, it's, it, it looks the part. It looks the part with the clothes. Um, same thing with, with a fedora. Fedoras, of course, are still uh, still worn, and they've never stopped being worn. You can get away with a fedora and in, in, in wearing any outfit. Um, and even maybe the bowler you can get away with. You know, it's, a, it's getting a little vintage, but it's a hat everybody knows and people usually like. And kind of the hipsters have kind of brought it back. So even though it may be a little bit of a novelty, um, draw a little bit of interest, it's something you probably socially get away with. The bowler is a little bit different. <laughs> the bowler, even though people know this hat, they see it as an old-fashioned hat. A hat that you'd see um, from, from an old black and white films, especially at one time it's almost the official hat of the FBI. Uh, Mel Melvin Purvis, um, the, who was second in command after uh, J. Edgar Hoover, the one who uh, chased down and captured and killed John Dillinger, was famous for wearing uh, his, his boulder hat. Um, 
but uh, you know, so when people see it, they're going to think of that. They're going to think of the, you know, it looks very old-fashioned. They're going to think of barbershop quartets. They're going to think of elections. You know, it's kind of become a very much of a novelty vintage. Hat. It seems an old hat. It's no longer worn. If it is worn, it's kind of seen as a novelty hat. Um, however, can, could you wear it socially? Could you wear it regularly? Of course you could. It is still uh, it's still acceptable, and actually. It all depends on what you're wearing. Now, actually, the the bowler hat w back in the day was a substitute hat, or actually a summer version of a formal hat, like a Homburg. It was almost like a summer Homburg. You know, in the hot summer days, rather than when you couldn't, when you put felt hat on your head and just boil your brain, you could put. You know, but you still wanted to look fancy. You still wanted to look very formal and chic. You could wear the boulder hat, and it would, and it had the same effect. And in fact, if you are going to, you know, so this is really most of the time would be a very formal hat. It's not, you know, so if you're going to be dressing up, either in more of a business casual or formal, you could wear the boulder hat in the summer, and it would be completely acceptable. And you know, even and also very look very practical. Uh, and actually, I think it looks quite sharp. I mean, look at me. Don't I look quite sharp? <laughs> now, what I would, one thing I would do is if you are going to wear a boulder hat, I would get two of them. I would get one with maybe a band like this, blue and red, or some other colors. Blue and red is the more traditional. Um, and, the, and that one you could wear, like if you're wearing like business casual or even dressy casual, you could get away with wearing the boulder. I think it would look... Um, I think it looks pretty cool. I think it looks uh, a little unique. Shows a little bit of style. Shows a little bit of, per of your own personality. Um, it definitely makes you look a, a little bit different, but not in a bad way and not too, too much in an extreme way. Um, however, if you are going to dress and wear one formally, uh, like say if you're going to wear a tux or a suit and you're going to some summer event, maybe one that's outdoors, then I would get one that has the black band. A black band, if you're like wearing a tux, it, you know, uh, or or a black suit or a dark blue suit, that's going to really work work well. It's going to make going to add a little bit of elegance to it, add a little bit of formality to it. Then it does become basically a uh, uh, a straw Homburg. You know, uh, it becomes the straw formal hat for the summer. And so, yes, this is still a hat that can that is um, is uh, is still very practical. Uh, you know, especially in the summer, it's not hot, you know, because it is a straw hat, it's very breathable. So, you know, I, and I see no, you know, it's got a good wide brim to keep the sun out of your face. So there's its practicality. And even though it may be an old fashioned look, a little more of a, a, a vintage look, I still think it's a damn cool hat. And I will say this, I never thought that it would be a hat that I would ever wear. <laughs> Uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because, yes, it is a hat from the 1920s. We didn't even see it after the 1930s or 40s. This really disappeared, except for, like I said, for uh, barbershop quartets and, and elections, uh, maybe some college uh, parades. Uh, that, that and because of the flat brim, and it seemed a little short to me in the, in the shape, I thought it was going to be similar to like with a pork pie with, for, a, for a big man. Uh, with a big round face, I thought that it was going to just look like you put a bottle cap uh, top on your head. However, I was in a hat shop a couple, about a month or two ago. They had one in there. In fact, it was this very one. And I'm like, you know, and I always will try something once just to see. That's how you find out. You don't know till you, till you try it. Like your mom said, you don't know you like it until you try it. <laughs> so I tried it. I put it on and I was pleasantly surprised. As you can see, you know, I have a big round head. But when I put this hat on, it actually elongates my face. That's because it has this very wide, wide brim, and that wi that wide brim really really sh really matches with the shape of my face, and actually seems to elongate it. It makes my face look lo longer because of the straight the this like stovetop telescope uh, uh, crown, you know, and the wide brim. It actually is elongating my face because it leads up into the hat. So I was pleasantly surprised. I put it on. I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta have this. Hat. And I'm very glad I got it. So, you know, it is a hat that I would recommend for the summer. Yeah, you may have to be a little brave to wear it. It may get you a few looks, but hey, that's not always a bad thing. But if you dress right when you're wearing it, if you're wearing uh, either a, 
um, a more uh, dressy casual and you're wearing a hat with the, without the black band um, or if you're wearing uh, business casual same thing um, or if you're wearing formal wear and you have the black band hat on suddenly it becomes a very uh, a very nice formal looking hat so you absolutely can wear it and get away with it and guess what it looks really good <laughs> okay guys that's all i've got for the boulder hat in conclusion, I do think that even though it's a very old hat that's kind of fell into a band in its, in its regular use, I think it's still a very practical hat. It's a very elegant looking hat if put with proper clothes. And I think that it is still something that you could wear and get away with. It may take a little bit of bravery, as I said, but hey, sometimes you gotta you got to step out and get noticed. And I think that if you wore this hat in the summer, and if you're the right clothes, it won't look put off. It's just going to look unique and looking unique is always a good thing <laughs> plus it'll keep your head very cool in the summer <laughs> i actually love this hat now um so all right um once again if you are enjoying my content please then hit this new little logo uh big pretty man logo um and give me a uh give me a subscribe um, also give me a like also I'd love to leave me a comment I'd love to hear what you think of the boulder hat if you wear one um, I always once again love hearing from my fa my fans and my subscribers so you know what go out you know enjoy the summer get you a good straw straw boulder hat put it on put on your finest su summer cl uh, summer cl uh, linen linen suit and you know what while you do it you stay pretty <laughs>